Okay. Two games to cover for this one, so we'll get through the first one pretty quick, because I only want to talk about it for so long. Also, my voice is shot again. Can you tell? I can tell. First, Jays lose 4 to nothing in the middle game of a three-game set against the ever-dangerous rivals New York Yankees. Oh no. This was Alec Manoa's start. This was the start that I felt best about our chances of winning in this series. First game being an absolute beatdown, and the third game being Yusei Kikuchi. Uh, we need this one. We needed this one. We're, we we lost this one, and that, that really sucks. As I said, Alec Manoa was pitching, and for the most part, he was pretty good. He didn't have his A-plus stuff. Uh, which happens from time to time, but he's such a bulldog. He was out there battling. He only really made a couple of mistake pitches, uh, but one of them ended up in a bases-clearing double, and that was really the end of the story because you're not going to win a lot of baseball games when you score zero runs. And I've said it before about other guys, but I have to say it again. Jamison Tyone isn't this good. Like, I have a hard time believing that the Yankees coaching staff has discovered a way to take league average or slightly above league average pitchers and turn them into unbeatable juggernauts. But that seems to be what's happened here. Cole and Severino are at the top of the rotation, and rightly so. They're both stars. I mean, Severino's been hurt for the last couple of years, but he was a star before he got hurt, and so far he looks like he's back to his old self. So until he proves otherwise, he's a star. And then Nestor Cortez is supposed to be like their fifth best starter, their, their extra guy, their, their guy who's in the back end of the rotation, and he's going to win the damn Cy Young Award. And then Jordan Montgomery, Jamison Tyone, these are not names to hearken with. These are not the building blocks of the best pitching rotation that anyone's seen since like the 1939 Yankees, but here we are. For whatever reason, everybody on the Yankees, the starting rotation, the, the lineup, the bullpen, everybody is on fire all at the same time. So they're winning every damn game, and it seems like there's nothing anyone can do to stop them. Like Even when the Blue Jays put their best guy out there and he does everything he possibly can, you make one mistake and there's three runs on the board. I think the Blue Jays made some pretty good swing decisions. I think they're relatively patient and solid in their approach. I don't think they're up there hacking at garbage as they have many, many times throughout the season. And yet, it's just really frustrating when a guy who objectively should be uh, generously the third best pitcher on the starting staff looks like he could be an ace on a lot of teams right now. That's a big problem. But an even bigger problem is the Blue Jays have Yusei Kikuchi on the mound for the third game. We've already lost the first two. We are staring down the barrel of a sweep at the hands of our division rivals. I understand that it's June. I understand that they already have a 12-game lead in the division. And what's one more between friends, right, at that point? Like, really, what's the difference between one game and... The it makes a big difference because if this team is going to do the thing, and I, I still believe that this team is going to do the thing, or at least has a chance to do the thing. If you're going to do the thing, all roads are going to lead to the Yankees, right? They're definitely going to win the division. They're definitely going to have the best record in the league. That means that they're going to get a buy in the first round. So even if you get past the first round of the playoffs, the Yankees are going to be sitting there waiting for you. So if you're going to beat the Yankees and you're going to find a way to scratch and claw your way through a series against the Yankees, you need to have some kind of game that can give you of the feeling that you can do it. You need to have some kind of way to believe that it's possible to beat these guys, even when they're playing at their best. So far, the Blue Jays have not given anyone any reason to believe that they can win when the Yankees are playing at their best. And now today's game, Jays win 10 to 9 over the New York Yankees in the final game of a three game set. Yeah, I, I guess they can beat the Yankees when they're at their best. First, a word about Kikuchi. Uh, this actually was not the worst case scenario. I, I thought he was going to get run out of town like a two thirds of an inning pitched, eight runs against kind of situation. This wasn't that. He pitched four innings, gave up three runs. Uh, didn't look great, but better than he has recently. And he battled, and he did his he did his very best. He once again had a hard time trusting his fastball. And I don't know if it's a chicken rag type situation, whether he didn't trust the fastball because he wasn't able to throw it for a strike, or he wasn't able to throw it for a strike because he didn't trust it. But I don't know. Once again, the thing is, when he gets into trouble, or when he feels like he needs a strike or a strikeout, he goes to the slider. And most of the time, that doesn't work. He does seem to have an inflated sense of confidence in it, and I wish he wouldn't. But credit where it's due, this could have been a lot worse. Uh, the way the Yankees are hitting right now and the way his last few weeks of pitching has gone, uh, this was probably about the best case scenario we could hope for. Three runs against on four innings, 
I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. I'll take it. On the other end of the spectrum, Adam Simber, since being acquired by the Jays about a year ago, uh, has been an absolute revelation and a huge part of this bullpen that has at times feel like it's being held together by scotch tape. Uh, he's been one of the most reliable arms in the bullpen. His unique delivery gives us a different look. So no matter who you bring in to complement the pieces in the bullpen, Adam Simber will always fit into that puzzle because he provides such a, a unique look that you can contrast against other arms that you have in the bullpen. Today was not his best work. Three runs against in one inning pitched. Uh, control was a little bit iffy. His velo was a little bit down, which is kind of concerning. Now, he's not really a strikeout velo kind of guy. He pitches to contact, and he induces a lot of ground balls, uh, and that's more of his game. So I don't really think a dip in velo is going to change that much. But still, I hope this doesn't pretend uh, some kind of injury or some other kind of discomfort because uh, we're going to need him for the whole rest of the season. He's a big part of this bullpen. So um, pick yourself up. Dust yourself off, Adam. This is fine. Well, we know you're going to contribute in the future, but uh, not the best today. Similarly, this kid, uh, this kid Maximo, he's a really fun name. I really, really enjoy that. I hope he kind of sticks around just because of that, but uh, not an auspicious debut. Giving up a home run to Kyle Higashioka, of all people, in your first batter that you face in the big leagues. That's uh, not, not super ideal. Um, yeah, and then giving up another run. I mean, just like you took, you were already down six to three. Springer just hit a home run to bring us to 6-3, to three, and then you give two back right away. That was that was deflating, so not ideal there. And Tim Meza. Uh, I, I love you, Tim. Uh, this I don't, Did he get an out? I don't think he got an out. He gave up another run. I gave up that home run to, to Rizzo. I mean, I, I guess that's fine, but you know, you're, you're there. You want to get everybody out, but you're there especially to get left-handed hitters out. Your job is to get Rizzo there. So, hmm. But that's enough of the bad. This is a game that we won. So first, let's talk a little bit about the good. I first want to talk about my man, Jimmy Garcia. Jimmy was coming off a rough outing of his own last time out, if you remember. This time, he bounced right back and was his usual bulldog self. This guy had a gutsy, gutsy inning of work uh, exactly when we needed it. He did a great job. Plus, he was barking down Glaber Torres after he struck him out at the end of that inning. That was really nice to see. Uh, Jimmy, again, you're a huge piece of this bullpen going forward. Uh, your ability to bounce back after a bad performance bodes very, very well, especially for how you're going to end up being used in the playoffs, which is pretty much like every damn day. So, yes, I love you, Jimmy. Way to bounce back. Fantastic work. Jordan Romano, a five-out save. Excellent. Striking out Judge with runners on and the eighth. Fantastic. Did everything you want there. Uh, I, it takes some stones to throw a high fastball to Judge in that scenario. Uh, so, woo, I'm glad that worked out, but, uh, mm, you know what? No, no, no quibbles. That was great. Great work. I was terrified, but great work. But honestly, with the team being down 8-3 to three in the sixth inning and having already kind of had their will crushed in the first two games, where in the first game they absolutely steamroll you, and in the second game... They they completely suppress you, and you can't get anything going. You can't support your best pitcher, and he turns in a pretty decent performance against a tough opponent, but it doesn't matter. They absolutely wet blanket you. And then to be down big late in the third game in front of a sold-out, or not quite sold-out, but really full stadium at home, Father's Day. Oh, this, this could have become an absolute whitewashing. This could have been a statement series against the Blue Jays. This would have been an indictment of the team. But then, a super clutch performance from a, a Blue Jay name of lore that, that we'll always remember for when he was a part of the Troy Tulowitzki trade, but he came back again to really bail us out. I'm speaking, of course, of the man, the myth, the legend, Miguel Castro. Just came in with some absolutely filthy stuff that could not stay in the zone. Gave up a hit, Gave up a couple walks, and then up strides Lourdes Gurriel Jr. And Miguel says, well, I got nowhere to put him, so I'm going to throw this Frisbee right in the middle, inside. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, yeah. Watching Lourdes smack the ball around like that, that was, that was chicken soup for my baseball-loving soul. That was absolutely fantastic. This guy has so much more power than a guy who has four home runs in mid-June, playing basically every day. He's been able to get his hits. He's been able to get some clutch hits. He's got a lot of doubles power right now. But to watch this guy be able to leave the yard in that fashion today, 
oh yeah, I feel like Lourdes Gurriel is only really hot when the rest of the team is is also kind of hitting well. He's like, he's he is the cherry on the top of the Sunday. He is not the foundation. The foundation is Bo. The foundation is Vlad. The foundation is Teo. Those are the guys who are the foundation. But Lourdes is the guy who puts the flourish. Lourdes is the guy who comes through in clutch, clutch situations. He's not the guy who's going to give you the 3-0 lead early. No, he's the guy you want up in exactly this scenario. With the bases loaded and the game on the line, honestly, there's almost no one else in this lineup. Like, Vlad, you want up all the time. But if you can't have Vlad, Lourdes is the other guy you want up in that situation. Guy is super clutch, especially with bases loaded. Did it again today. Glorious. Teo actually had a pretty rough day. He flailed at a lot of garbage, but he uh, was able to make contact with at least one garbage pitch uh, and uh, hit it out for a three-run home run to give the Blue Jays the lead. So big ups to my man, Teo. Uh, also an excellent uh, stop and admire job on that home run. I was like just chest out, absolutely dominating and filling the space. Fabulous. Love that stuff. Vlad had a great day at the plate. Springer had a homer. Uh, Alejandro Kirk, I think, took three walks in this one. That's pretty solid. To score 10 runs, you don't have to have everybody going, but you need to have a big chunk of your lineup going, and we did today. Santiago wasn't particularly good today. Bo wasn't particularly good today. I don't think Cha Chapman got on base once, I think, and Tapia had himself a double at one point. But for the most part, no. It was the it was the, the big heavy hitters who got the job done. It was Teo. It was Kirk. It was Vlad. And it was Lourdes Guriel Jr. Doing it all in front of his dad, who was there tonight. That's, that's nice. That, that warms the cockles. That's really sweet. This was an important win. It really was. Uh, I know I've said it before and I'll say it again. 1 out of 162. And it's, it's hard to take a look back at any given time and say, this one matters more than the others. But you haven't seen the Yankees in weeks, more than a month. And during that time, you've watched them steamroll everybody, including your, the guys immediately behind you, the Tampa Bay Rays, who are no slouches themselves. And then they come into your house and they smack you around for the first two games. And then they get a big lead in the third game. If you fold then and there and you lose that game and you get swept in that series at home, big crowds, if you, if you get swept in that scenario and then you have to get on a plane and go on the road and do nothing but kind of think about it for hours, I think that's the kind of thing that can really cause a tailspin that can really get in your heads but all of a sudden losing that first game losing that second game sure you like to win those games but none of that really stings anymore no that's not what you're thinking about that's not what you're taking away from the series anymore now what you're taking away is yeah these guys gave us everything they had they showed us the full extent of their power and we were still able to come back snatch a win away from the jaws of defeat get on the plane feeling good about ourselves and for the Yankees, they're getting on a plane too. And instead of thinking about, oh man, we came in and kicked these guys' asses. They're supposed to be the best challenge in this division. Ha, <laughs> whatever, we got... No. Instead, they're getting on a plane thinking, man, we were this close to a sweep. And we let it get away. And they took it away from us. We've been talking about the Blue Jays leaving games on the table. Not being able to sweep and finish off opponents when it looks like they have every opportunity to. They take the first two games in convincing fashion and then just kind of let it slip away in the third game. And we talked about how that makes the team feel and how that makes the fans feel and kind of makes us feel nervous and we're kind of like, yeah, we're leaving the door open for disaster and that's not good. Well, how are the Yankees feeling right now? They had a big lead late and an opportunity to sweep a division rival at their home and really put their stamp, their statement of emphasis on how their season is going to go because nobody can stop us. Not even the Blue Jays. Not even at their home in front of a full crowd that wants them to win badly. Nothing can stop us. Instead, they had a chance. And they let it slip away. The door is still open. I don't know. I understand. It's still an 11-game lead. It's still almost insurmountable. It's, it's very, very unlikely that the Yankees do anything other than cruise to a division win. But... When these teams meet in the playoffs, and we can only hope that at some point we're going to meet in the playoffs, and when they do, I hope the Yankees remember this game. I hope the Blue Jays remember this game. I am definitely going to remember this game, if only because it's way more fun to remember this game than the, the previous two. Okay, baseball philosophy over. I'm done. This was a great win. Jays are off to Chicago to see Jose Barrios against the Chicago White Sox, this time at their home. 
Uh, we swept them last time, convincingly so. So uh, they'll probably remember that and bring their A game. The Jays will have to as well, if only to put the smell of the first two games of the Yankee series behind them. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video and this channel. I will see you, I guess, is it tomorrow? I think, yeah, I think it's tomorrow night. Don't get a day off until Thursday. I will see you tomorrow night. Jose Barrios against the Chicago White Sox. See you then.